I believe we've had a very good lunch. Na mimi nimekuwa na mankuli ya mchana mzuri. But I pray that uh, it doesn't interfere with us, isn't it? Na naomba isingiliane nasi kwa njia yote. I normally have a challenge when uh, you've eaten good food uh, over lunch time. Kawaida na changamoto napokula chakula mchana. Amen. Amen. Can we just make a prayer? Father, we thank you for this afternoon. Baba tunakushukuru kwa ajili ya mchana wa leo. Thank you for your word that comes to us now. Asante kwa neno lako linalotujia sasa. And for the privilege and the opportunity of ministering to your people this day. Na kwa ajili ya nafasi na fursa ya kuhudumia watu wako siku ya leo. I pray even as we go over the motions of this message. Naomba hata tunapoenda katika jambo la neno hili. May your blessing be upon us. Watch and may you bless us and refresh us. Na utubariki na utuishi. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Now I want to talk on a very interesting subject. Sasa nataka kuongea juu ya somo ambalo ni la kufurahisha. And uh, for me to qualify perhaps a little. Sasa kwa mimi kuhitimu angalau kidogo. To talk about this. Kuongea juu ya hii. I will introduce myself again. Nitajitambulisha tena. My name is Charles. Majina yangu ni Charles. Uh, I didn't mention this. I was waiting to say this in si, this session. Sikutaja hii nilikuwa nangojea nijitambulishe wakati huu. I am married. Mimi nimeoa. And I've been married for 34 years. Na nimeoa kwa miaka 34. So I think I qualify now to talk, isn't it? Kwa hivyo nahisi ninahitimu kunena, sivyo? I have uh, three children. Nina watoto watatu two grown up daughters wawili mabinti ambao wamekua and also a grown up son na pia nina mwana wa kiume aliyekuwa pia and i have one grandchild na nina mjukuu mmoja i was privileged a month and a half ago to get a grandchild nilijaliwa mwezi mmoja na nusu kupita kuwa na mjukuu should clap for me nipigieni makofi <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I am so happy this afternoon. Kwa hivyo nafurahi sana mchana wa leo. To have been given an opportunity to talk about principles of a healthy pastoral marriage. Kupatiwa nafasi ya kuongea juu ya kanuni ya ndoa ya mchungaji iliyo imara ama iliyo na afya. I know this is not a topic that uh, we often hear in conferences. Najua ile sio somo kila wakati tunalisikia katika makongamano. I may not know the reason why that emphasis is not I mean is not laid on this. Huenda nisijue ni sababu gani msisitizwe wewe katika hii. But this is one of the most most important and crucial topics or rather issues that must be addressed when we come together as leaders. Lakini hili ni moja wapo ya somo lililo muhimu sana na kusitizwa tunapokuja pamoja kama viongozi. Because I believe the family is actually what I call as the foundation of a healthy church. Maana najua kwamba jamii ndio msingi wa kile ninachoita kanisa lililothabiti. And I believe the health and success of the church na naamini afya na ufanisi wa kanisa is linked to the success of our families. Ninashikamana na mafanikio ya jamii zetu. You cannot be able to div you cannot divorce your family from the church. Uwezi tenga jamii yako na kanisa. And run off the church as something different na your family as something different. Na uendeshe kanisa kama jambo tofauti na jamii yako tofauti. Without there being a connection that ba will bring success to either your family or the church. Pasipokuwa na mshikamano ambao unaweza leta ufanisi Either kwa kanisa ama kwa jami yako. So I will, I will share this but I'll be talking out of my personal experiences that I've had as a, a pastor and also as a family man. Kwa hivyo nitashiriki hii haswa kupitia ule ujuzi ambao nimekuwa nao kama mchungaji na pia mtu mwenye jami. And when I look at all of us here I believe all of us have, has something you can share about your family. Na pia napo tazama hapa ni nakika unajamba malo na zashiriki kusiana jami yako. So our reference scripture will come from the book of 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 to verse 7. Kwa hivyo andiko letu la msingi natuwa katekitabu cha Timotheo kwanza mlangu wa Timotheo kwanza mlangu wa tatu verse 1 to verse 7. Mlangu wa tatu moja hadi saba. Very very important important words that were spoken by the Apostle Paul. Maneno muhimu ambayo linenwa na mtume Paulo. And, I, and as we open that, one na, of the things that was coming in my mind when I was preparing this message. Na tunaponena hii, moja wapa jamba malu ingia katika wa, uh, mawazu yangu lipokuwa na tarisha ujumbe. Was, why did Paul, just yeah. think about that, why did Paul ya kwamba, kwa nini Paulo advised us Ali, to be like him. 
There's a place where he was talking about marriage. And he says, I would that you be like me. Na akasema, natamani muwe kama mimi. Then he says, but if you can't, then marry. Lakini kama ungependa oa. I was just wondering. Na shanga atu. And I began to realize, I think the Apostle Paul didn't want to carry on him a lot of baggage. Na nika anza kuanza kwamba Paolo hakutaka kujibebea mishiko mingi. I do not know, maybe the theologians who are here can tell us whether he was married or not. Sijui, wana theologia wako hapo, wenda wakatuelezia, either alioa au la. Because the experiences Paul is talking about here, he must have had an idea, I'm not too sure about that. Maana ujuzi yamba Paolo antuelezia hapo, wenda ikawa likuwa na... Ujuzi aula. Or he had seen it in the in the believers that he was taking care of. Akiona kwa na but there is no record in the Bible where the Apostle Paul connects himself with marriage life or family life. That when he was writing to Timothy, one of his sons, he addressed the chapter or the, 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 the fact of marriage very, very strongly with the church. That in 1 Timothy 3, verse 1 to verse 7, this is what he says. He says, this is a true saying. Anasema, ni hili, ni nino la if a man desire the office of a bishop, Mtu akitaka kazi ya askofu He desireth a good work Atamani kazi njema I think he was addressing leadership here Na alikuwa na ongea na uongozi hapa I want us to remove the word bishop there Nataka tutue neno la askofu pale And we can cascade it down Because at some point he was also talking about A man desiring the office of a deacon Tunaeze eleta chini Maana badaya alikuwa na ongea juu ya mtu Mbaya natamani kuwa katika ofisi ya shemasi and you will see him repeating almost the same words that he has used in this portion of scripture na utaona akiregelea maneno haya ambayo ameelezea katika hii sehemu ya maandiko so he is simply saying a man who desires or a woman who desires to serve god in the church kwa hivyo ana nena ya kwamba mtu au mwanamke ambaye anatamani kumtumikia mungu katika kanisa or to be a leader of the house of god ama kuwa kiongozi katika nyumba ya mungu he says you are desiring a good work anasema unatamani kazi njema begins now talking about now the hard part of that good work. He says a bishop or a leader must then be Anasema bas askofu ama kiongozi imempasa kuwa. Now you can help me read. It says he must be what? Blameless. Anasema lazima awe nini? Blameless. Mtu asila umika. Then he says the husband of one wife. Alafu anasema mume wa mke mmoja. And as for me I have bolded that word the husband of one wife. Kwa hivyo kwangu mimi nimeweka mstari kwa hilo neno mume wa mke mmoja. No wonder when we were introducing ourselves here we, are, we were insisting we are married to one wife. No uh, si ajabu tupokuwa tunajitambulisha hapa tunasema tumeoa mke mmoja and then he goes further to say vigilant alafu anaendelea kusema kwamba a, 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 mwenye e, e, mwenye vigilant awe mwenye busara sober awe kiasi and then another word that, that is very key here of good behavior na neno lengine hapa linasema mwenye tabia nzuri i've underlined the word behavior there nimeweka mstari kwa hilo then he says given to hospitality Inasema, ali, ali mkaribishaji. and up to teach Ajuae kufundisha. not given to wine si mtu ulevi. nor no striker si watu. nor greedy or filthy luck Wala awe, uh, 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 mtu mwenye tama. No, nor, nor greedy or filthy luck that's now money Wala si mtu mwenye kupenda fedha. but patient Bali mnyenyekevu not a brawler sio a uh, 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 si mtu wa kujadiliana not covetous wala si wa kutamani then i have underlined again in my bible or in my notes here alafu pia nimeweka msari katika maneno yangu hapa i've said one that ruleth well his own house ya kwamba yule aliye simamia nyumba yake Vizuri. And the word there is the word ruling well. Some Bibles say he that manages well, manager. Neno la pale ni yule anaye simamia nyumba yake vizuri. Having his children in subjection with all gravity. Akiwa na watoto wake katika ustahivu. So again the family comes their children also are there. Waivo hapo jamii na kuja kwa watoto pia. And it keeps on saying. Na inendelea kusema. And that is in, in, in brackets. It's closed up. It says if for if a man know not how to rule his own house 
na hiyo imeweka katika bracket nasema yaani mtu asiyejua kusimamia nyumba yake mwenyewe how shall he take care of the church of god atalitunzaje kanisa la mungu and i think that's the question that we need to answer in this session na nafikiri ndio swali tunahitaji kujibu katika hii sehemu a question that many many confesses don't address swali ambalo makongamano mengi hayaneni juu yake we can talk about managing money tunaweza kuongea juu ya kusimamia pesa we can talk about managing people Tunaweza kuongea juu ya kusimamia watu. We can talk about managing projects. Tunaweza kuongea juu ya kusimamia miradi. But we hardly talk about managing our own homes, our own families. Lakini si rahisi kuongea juu ya usimamizi wa nyumba zetu sisi wenyewe. I'm here to see a conference where they are saying how to manage your wife and your family. Natamani kuona makongamano yanayoenea juu ya kusimamia mke wako na wanao. Or how to manage your husband and family. Au jinsi ya kusimamia mumeo na jamii yako. Because this is a question that the apostle was asking. Maana hili ndio swali ambalo amtume uh, um, alikuwa anaulizia and then he went further to just to finish he said not a novice alafu anaendelea kusema akisema asiwe mtu aliyeongoka karibu being lifted up with pride he fall into the condemnation of the devil asije akajivuna akaanguka katika hukumu ya ibilisi then he goes to the outsiders people who watch us and people whom we are managing alafu anatoka kwa watu ambao wanatazama ambao tunawasimamia he says moreover anasema tena Now this something to caution us those who are looking at our lives the, the parishioners the people whom we are ministering to Wewe ni jambo la kutadharisha kwa wale wanao tutazama wale watu tunawatumikia He says he must be he must have a good report of them which are without Anasema tena imempasa kushuhudiwa mema na watu walio nje lest the lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil Ili asianguke katika lawama na mtego wa ibilisi now you will find my outline on page i think it should be page 26 if i'm not wrong sasa utapata katika hayo maelezo yangu katika uh, ukurasa wa 26 kama sijakosea and i'm drawing you there because i have a lot of things to say within restricted time i might just read my notes and explain very quickly na nawaleta hapo ili ya kwamba maana na mambo mengi ya kunena naweza tu kusoma na kazi zangu na nikamalize so from this portion of scriptures that we have read about in, in, up here kwa hivyo kutokana na hiyo sehemu ya maandiko tumesoma kutoka hapa i realize that the health of the health and the success of the church nimegundua afya na ufanisi wa kanisa and our families na jamii zetu they are linked zinashikamana they are linked zinashikamana and you can never divorce these two from one another na uwezi tengana hizi mbili kutoka kwa nyingine family life is significantly important in the well being of the church maisha ya jamii ni muhimu kwa ajili ya ukuaji wema wa kanisa if families are not healthy and vibrant kama jamii hazina afya na zikuendelea the, the church will not be healthy and vibrant also bas kanisa pia halitakuwa na afya na lenye nguvu in fact somebody says you look at the pastor and his family you will see a copy of the church that is reading even the way a pastor talks hata vile mchungaji anavonena and the way he carries himself na jinsi anavyojiongoza you will see it in the members utaona kwa washirika Even the tongues he speaks. Hata ile ndimi anaongea. If he's kura masanda, kura masanda, kura everybody in the church will be speaking the same language. Kura masanda, kura masanda. Eh hata akiongea kura basanda, kura basanda, kanisa pia litakuwa la kura basanda. I have real, I have discovered that they somehow listen to what the pastor says. I don't know why. Nimegundua wanasikiza vile mchungaji anasema sio kwa nini. So I don't know whether those are tongues from heaven or whether they copy the pastor I'm not too sure. Kwa hivyo sijui kama ni ndimi kutoka mbinguni ama wanaiga mchungaji wao sina uhakika. So it is very crucial and even necessary for pastors and leaders to set an example in this regard. Kwa hivyo ni muhimu haswa kwa wachungaji ngaji kuweka mfano kwa mambo kama haya The qualifications for pastors and elders are outlined in the portion of scripture which I have read Kuhitimu kwa mchungaji ama kiongozi yameelezewa katika hiyo sehemu ya maandiko tumesoma And the key word which we never see there very quickly is the word manage Na neno la umuhimu ambalo atulioni kwa uraisi katika hiyo maandiko ni kule usimamizi Manage jinsi ya kusimamia in another uh, version it says he must manage his own household inasema aweze kuisimamia nyumba yake mwenyewe with all dignity keeping his children in submission na ustahifu wote na kuweka watoto wake katika ustahifu and he says and if some if someone does not know how to manage his own household na neno linasema ikiwa mtu hawezi kuisimamia nyumba yake vizuri how can he manage the house of christ anaweza kuisimamia nyumba ya mungu so god has called pastors to set an example 
in that regard. Kwa hivyo Mungu ameita wachungaji kuweka mfano katika mambo hayo. First Peter chapter 3 and verse uh, chapter 5 and verse 3. Waraka wa Petro wa kwanza msara wa kwanza msara wa 3. First Peter 5 3. Waraka kwanza wa Petro 5:3. It says this. Inasema haya. Not domineering over those in your charge. Sio kutawala juu ya wale walio kanisani. But it says but being an example to the flock lakini kuwa mfano kwa kondoo he was talking about the shepherds there alikuwa anaongea juu ya wachungaji hapo so this extends to every part of the pastor's life and ministry kwa hivyo hii inaelekea kwa kila mchungaji na huduma and this is no less true of the house or the home or the family that he keeps na hii pia ni ukweli kwa ajili ya kanisa na jamii ambayo anaiongoza so the pastor has two roles kwa hivyo mchungaji ana sehemu mbili he shepherds the disciples in the church ana 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 chunga kondoo kanisani and the shepherds also his family na pia anaongoza jamii yake now this duty cannot be delegated to another person kwa mambo haya mawili huwezi kuya elekeza kwa mtu mwingine it's only the shepherd who will do that ni yule mchungaji atatenda hayo and perhaps the most chief responsibility of the pastor na haswa kazi kuu ya mchungaji and this is where i'm coming to now na hapa ndipo naingia sasa is the care for his wife ni kulinda mke wake I don't know nothing is as frustrating than when our pastor and his wife are not together. Sijui kama kuna jambo ambalo linafadhaisha sana wakati ambapo mchungaji hayuko pamoja na mumewe. Or the, or, or the pastor and her husband are not together. Ama mchungaji na mumewe hawapo pamoja. I'm talking practical things. Naongea mambo yaliyo I, I remember when we were beginning our church. Nakumbuka tulipokuwa tunaanza kanisa letu. Sometimes it was so difficult for my wife. Wakati mwingine ilikuwa ngumu sana kwa mchungaji wangu. Because she knows every, every Sunday I'll be standing before her and three or four people every Sunday. Maana alijua kila Jumapili nitasimama mbele yake na watu wawili watatu. You know church doesn't just start and uh, you know Kanisa unajua haianzi tu na kuendelea especially when you are beginning from nothing hasa wakati tunapoanza kutoka chini it takes time inachukua wakati and sometimes you know you are speaking to the same person preaching to the same woman the same man the same children every single day na wakati mwingine unaongea na yule yule mtu mwanamke yule yule watoto wale wale na mtu yule yule i want you to imagine if the week was not good for both of you na nataka ufikirie wakati ambapo juma halikuwa jema kwenye nyinyi yote i'm looking at your faces natazama yeah. nyuso zenu i know you know what i'm talking about najua kile mnaongea juu maybe such, such, some things happen in the house or in the family pengine kuna mambo yalitendeka katika jamii ama katika family Familia. many dynamics that you know that come with life in families kuna mambo mengi yanakuja pamoja na jamii katika jamii and you are packing your wife or you are packing your husband now we are going to the church na unachukua mke wako unachukua mume wako sasa tunaenda kanisani you will be she will be sitting before you atakuwa amekaa mbele yako and you are there leading the worship na uko pale unaongoza ibada then, then you finish and you say can we now turn to the word of god na unapomaliza unasema acha tuelekee katika neno la Mungu anyone who has identified that yoyote ambaye amehusikana na hiyo i know all of you you've never gone through that you are blessed me and you when have pitia hiyo imebarikiwa now listen sasa skiza the most heavy responsibility jambo zito zaidi is ministering to your wife ni kumhudumia mke wako sometimes pastor's wife feel very lonely and neglected wakati mwingine uh, 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 mke wa mchungaji anajisi upweke na kutengwa i wish the wives were here natamani wake wangekuwa hapa why are they not telling why are they not saying amen <laughs> All right. Hi. Hey? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it feels like their husbands are more married to the church than they are married to the wife. Na wakati mwingine wanahisi kuwa mume wao ameolewa zaidi na kanisa kuliko wao wenyewe. This is the reason why Paul was addressing some of the issues that we are talking about. Hii ndio sababu Paulo alikuwa ananenea juu ya mambo mengine ambayo tunaongea juu yake sasa. And in that portion of scripture. Na katika hiyo sehemu ya maandiko. I want to bring to you three reasons why the why we, you need a healthy pastoral marriage. In that scripture, just in that scripture. Katika hiyo maandiko nataka kuwaletea vigezo vitatu ambavyo ni muhimu kwa wewe kuwa na jamii iliyo na afya. And I'm picking verse 4 and verse 5 very quickly. Na nachukua msari wa 4 na wa 5 kwa haraka. This verse says this. Whom msari unasema hivi? It says he must manage I'm using the translation of manage. He must manage his own household well. Inasema lazima awe anasimamia nyumba yake vizuri. With all dignity keeping his children in submission. Ajuae kuitisha 
na watoto wake katika ustahivu and that, then the question comes that we've been addressing here alafu swali nakuja ambalo tumekuwa tukinena jiwa so the first thing the reason why you must manage your family kwa hivyo jambo la kwanza kwa nini usimamie jamii yako is because your marriage models the gospel kwa sababu ndoa yako ndio mfano wa injili your marriage models the gospel ndoa yako inaonyesha ile injili every christian marriage is a picture and a platform for the gospel kila ndoa ya mkristo ni picha na ndio mahali pa injili that's why paul in ephesians hii ndio sababu paulo katika wa ephesians i'm sure you know chapter 5 ad- addressing addressing the, ch- the relationship between christ and the church mlango wa 5 anapopo anaelekeza ule uhusiano kati ya kanisa na kristo he compared with a man and his wife anafananisha na mke na m- mume na mkewe when he says so men ought to love their wives the way christ loved the church anaposema waume inawapasa kupenda wake zao kama vile kristo alivyopenda kanisa he was using the marriage model to show how christ loves us alikuwa anatumia mfano wa ndoa kuonyesha jinsi kristo anavyotupenda modeling a healthy marriage is one of the most practical forms of discipleship that we can give to the people that we are shepherding kulea ndoa ama jamii iliyo nzuri ndio mfano mwema wa kuonyesha kanisa lilo sawa and the more our marriage are strong the more the church that we are pastoring is strong na zaidi jamii zetu zimesimama imara ndivyo kanisa lake linavyosimama imara i have somebody who keeps on telling me jesus didn't ask you to love another person's bride na kia mtu akiniambia kwamba yesu hakuniambia nipende a a a a bride of another person a a a Uh, uh, mke wa mtu mwingine he said love your wife aliambia nipende mke wangu so he says the church does not belong to you like bishop uh, like pastor greg has been telling us kwa hivyo anatuambia kanisa sio lako it belongs to who pastor greg anatuambia the church belongs to who so kanisa ni la nani so who is the bride for the church i mean who is the bride for jesus who kwa should who should love the church kwa hivyo mke wa yesu ni nani kwa hivyo Yesu anapaswa kupenda nani? And who is your wife? Na mke wako ni nani wewe? Is it the church or is it that lady, that man, who is your spouse, that man or that woman or that who is it? Mke wako ni nani? Whom should you love? Okay. Unahitajika kumpenda nani? I think it's only my dear brother here mm. who is answering. The rest of you are smiling. I think it's fine. <laughs> Amen. So the first thing is marriage models the gospel. Kwa hivyo jambo la kwanza ni ya kwamba ndoa zetu zinatujengea mfano wa injili. And, and that number two, the second thing, jambo la pili is that marriage is part of your ministry. Ya kwamba ndoa ni sehemu ya huduma yako. Marriage is part of ministry. Ndoa ni sehemu ya huduma yako. That's why the question comes how. Hii ndio sababu swali nakuja vipi? How? Vipi? It means if you are doing ministry you must also do at home. Inamaanisha unapofanya huduma lazima pia uifanye nyumbani. The Bible doesn't tell us to balance our lives no. Biblia itwambia kwamba tu, tu, tuwe na kiasi katika maisha yetu na. Balancing is part of management. Ile kubalance ni kati ya kusimamisha. And we'll see we'll look at balancing at the end of this message. Na tatazama ile kukubalance ku, ku mwisho wa So the Bible says manage. Bila nasema simamia. Managing, managing. Kusimamia. So, man, so the marriage becomes part of your ministry. Kwa hivyo ndoa inakuwa sehemu ya huduma yako. And I can assure you people are looking at your marriage more than any other. Na nakuhakishia watu wanatazama ndoa yako kuliko jambo lingine lolote. You know some people think we pastors never go through trouble with watu our ingi, marriages. Watu wengine wanadhania si wachungaji hatupitii shida. Na ndoa zetu. I, I think some of you may not have that experience probably. Na, nafikiri pengine wengi, wengine wenyu hamweza msio na hiyo experience Be, pengine. Because you have a perfect marriage. Maana una ndoa iliyo imara. But me have realized you can never have a perfect marriage. Lakini mimi nigundua huwezi kuwa na ndoa iliyo Uh, uh, imara. You can only have an ideal marriage. Unaweza kuwa tu na ndoa ambayo iko sawa. Meaning challenges are the same. Ila maanisha changamoto ni but siko sawa. It depends with the way you will manage those challenges. Lakini nategemea jinsi unavyoshughulikia hizo changamoto. Just like you can't have a perfect church. Kama vile huwezi kuwa na kanisa lililo sawa. 
I think the word is kamilifu. Kamilifu, yeah, amen. If you use the word kamilifu, people will understand what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Uwezi kuwa na kanisa kamilifu. But your church will depend on how you are depending on God to manage your church. Lakini inategemea jinsi na vumtegemea mungu kusimamia kanisa. Now, number three, the third reason. Sasa, sababu ya tatu. Is that your marriage strength is equivalent to your ministry strength. Ni ya kwamba uwezo wanduwa yako ni sawasawa na uwezo. Meaning if you win at home you win in the church. Hiyo inamaanisha ukishinda nyumbani umeshinda kanisani. If you win in the church you must win at home. Ukishinda kanisani lazima ushinde nyumbani. You can never you can never ignore one of the two. Hauwezi dharau moja wapo. Because if you do maana unapotenda you will realize it's affecting the other. Utagundua kwamba inahusisha nyingine. So those are the reasons why we must manage our marriages. Kwa hivyo hiyo ndio sababu ya kwamba lazima tusimamie ndoa zetu. Amazingly marriage is an amazing relationship between a couple who come to one another ndoa ni uhusiano wa ajabu ambapo wa maharusi kuja pamoja and when we are getting married this is what we are saying na tunapoona hiki ndio tunasema you are simply telling your spouse unamwambia tu mchumba wako whether you are the man or you are the woman kama uwe mume ama mke you are saying this is who i am unamwambia hivi ndivyo nilivyo accept me nikubali and love me na unipende for the rest of your life kwa maisha yako yote That's the reason why when they came to Jesus. Hii ndio sababu walipokuja kwa Yesu. And they asked him, "Master, na ukamwambia Bwana, is it lawful?" They were testing him. Je, ni haki? That any man that a man should keep away his wife for any reason. Ya kwamba mtu aweke mke wake kando kwa sababu yoyote. That was a question. Hiyo ilikuwa swali. Meaning can a man put away his wife for any reason? Je, mtu anaweza kutalaki mke wake kwa sababu yoyote? Jesus answered and says it was not so from the beginning. Yesu akamwambia haikuwa hivyo tokea mwanzo. He says from the beginning God never made it that way. Meaning God never initiated divorce from the beginning. Anasema tokea mwanzo Mungu hakusudia hivyo. Inamaanisha Mungu hakutaka talaka tokea mwanzo. He says therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and be with his wife, connect with his wife. Akasema basi mume ataachana na baba na mamake na kuambatana na mke wake. And there will be come one flesh. Na watakuwa mwili mmoja. You simply surrender to one another. Unajisalimisha kwa mwingine. It doesn't matter what. Haimaanishi nini? And we as believers who believe in the Bible, na sisi kama waamini tunaoamini Biblia, we must come to the place where we understand marriage, marriage brings us into one person. Lazima tufikie katika kiwango kuamini ya kwamba ndoa inatufanya kuwa kitu kimoja. You have no option when you get married. Hatuna chaguo tunapoona. In fact the apostle Paul tries to make it very clear when he was talking in the book of Rome uh, the, the, the book of Corinthians and the book of Romans. Hasa Paulo anajaribu kuiweka wazi alipokuwa akinena nasi katika kitabu cha Warumi. And he says even if one lives. Na anasema hata mmoja anapoondoka. You will stay like that until that person dies. Utakaa hivyo hivyo mpaka huyo mtu afe. Or you reconcile with that person. Ama muregeleane na huyo mtu. Which makes gives marriage a very high standard. Ambapo inapatia ndoa kiwango cha juu zaidi. I may not I may not be able to convince some people. When na nisisitizi watu wengine but I'm one person who believes there is no room for divorce in a christian marriage lakini mimi ni yule ambaye naamini hakuna nafasi ya talaka katika ndoa ya ukristo until one does until one dies paka mmoja afe but there, of course there could be room for separation lakini wenda ukawa na nafasi ya kutengana and the only the only thing you can do is to endeavor to reconcile and be together na njia yote eh, 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 njia jambo ambalo unaweza kufanya ni kungangana muweze kuwasiliana na kuregeleana pamoja because what was happening they wanted to test Jesus to see why there's going to be room if they can be given room for whatever reason to put away their wives maana kile walikuwa wanajaribu wanajaribu Yesu ili ya kwamba wapatie nafasi yoyote ya kuweka wake zao kando and then Jesus says na Yesu akasema he says Moses permitted you because of the hardness of your hearts anasema Yesu aliwaru, uh, uh, Musa aliwaruhusu kwa sababu ya ugumu wa mioyo which we call we, we call it permissive will ambayo tunasema hiyo ni mapenzi yaliyokubalika and I, i normally say divorce is simply a permissive will na nasema kawaida ya kwamba talaka ni mapenzi ambayo yamekubaliwa this is why we are doing it some hii, people are doing it and it's ndio, acceptable hii ndio sababu wengine wanafanya na nakubalika the perfect will of god jesus says it was not so from the beginning lakini mapenzi kamili ya mungu yesu anasema haikuwa hivyo tokea mwanzo and that's the reason why we as shepherds must carry with us the standard of the perfect will of god na hii ndio sababu sisi kama wachungaji lazima tubebe yale kile kiwango cha ukamilifu wa mapenzi ya Mungu. And this will not happen without issues. Na hii itatendeka bila mambo. There will be things that will come and attack the marriage. Kuna mambo yatatokea na kushambulia ndoa. Good enough. 
mazuri zaidi we have in the bible tunayo katika biblia pillars that can help us mambo ambayo yanazisaidia pastor greg talked about five pillars seven pillars ten pillars me i have five pillars that can help us greg aliongea juu ya nguzo tano nguzo kumi mimi na nguzo tano but not motivational lakini sio zile za kuchochea number 1 ya kwanza number 1 ya kwanza to strengthen your marriage and i'll just mention them i know we've sat in classes of this type of things the, this type of uh, 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 lessons ah 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 ya kwanza sitachochea lakini number 1 ya kwanza love upendo love upendo i let me mention wacha nitaje all marriages are the same ndoa zote ni sawa whether you are a pastor uwe mchungaji whether you are a, a, a member of the church uwe ni mshirika wa kanisa whether you are a bishop uwe ni askofu or you are just a member ama uwe ni mshirika you can never draw a line that bishops have this type and, and members have this type wezi weka mpaka ya kwamba maskofu wana aina hii ya ndoa na washirika wana hii ya ndoa they are the same yote ni sawa the only thing jambo la pekee you as a shepherd wewe kama mchungaji you as a leader wewe kama kiongozi your standards are here viwango vyako viko hapa manage simamia manage simamia are we together with somebody here je niko pamoja na mtu hapa so love is basically a, is in, a, in my definition is profoundly tender it means profoundly tender ile upendo inamaanisha okay i'm sure those who understand english okay wala na ile kizungu eh passionate yani ile shauku affectionate ile shauku towards one another kwa kwa kila mmoja love is when you tenderly care for one another upendo ni ile hisia ya kujaliana ninyi kwa nyinyi and be and, and, and be pa- and, and be passionate towards one another na una shauku na mwingine it simply it simply being affectionate to one another hiyo inamaanisha tu kuwa na hisia na mwenzako and we know na tunajua First Corinthians 13 wa, wa kwanza, has given us the definition of love. Imetupatia imetupatia utangulizi wa upendo. You don't even need to go there brother. Let Hatu me just We know Paul says love is and he has mentioned many things. Tunajua kwamba Paulo anasema upendo ni na ametaja mambo mengi. Let me just mention a few. Wacha nitaje machache. Love is patient. Upendo unavumilia. Love is kind. Upendo uh, 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 kind. Upendo ni ukarimu. Love is love is not envious. Upendo hauna wivu. Love does not boast. Upendo haujivuni. Love is not proud. Upendo hauna kiburi. Love is not rude. Upendo hauna kiburi. Love does not self seek. Upendo haujinufaishi wenyewe. Love is not easily angered. Upendo hau shiki hasira kwa haraka love does not keep the record of wrongs upendo hauweki hesabu ya makosa love does not delight in evil upendo haipendezi na maovu love rejoices in truth upendo inafurahia ukweli are you taking those things jeo naweka tiko hayo mambo now sasa when, when you practice love unapo tekeleza upendo i realized nimegundua you are only giving you una, Unapeana tu. You are giving to your spouse. Unapeana kwa mchumba wako. I came to realize. Nimekuja kugundua. That love ya kwamba upendo is simply a ni, pillar. Ni, ni, ni nguzo. A pillar. Ni nguzo. That helps us ambaye anasaidia to navigate kuele, kuelekeza every problem that marriage comes along with it. Kila shida ambayo ndoa inakuja nayo. I know if we went to we went into 1 Corinthians 13 najua kama tungeenda kwa Korintho wa kwanza 13 and began ticking what love is na tukaanza kuweka nakala upendo ni nini you will realize it's simply a solution to all the problems that people talk about in marriage utagundua ni suluhisho ya shida zote ambazo zinaongea katika ndoa am i saying the truth je naongea kweli love is not rude upendo hauna kiburi rude i'm using the word rude here hauna ujeuri now when your wife or your husband becomes mjeuri what do you do mhm mumeo ama mkeo akiwa mjeuri unafanya nini love does not keep a record of all wrongs upendo hauweki rekodi ya maovu yote when your husband or your wife wrongs you what do you do wakati mume wako ama mke wako amekosea unafanya nini do you have a li- do, do you have a record je unayo nakala so that when it happens again you remind ya kwamba inapotendeka tena unakumbuka That's love. It does not rejoice with evil. Haifurahi na maovu. When something bad is happening, how do you behave? Wakati jambo baya linapotendeka, je, unakuwa vipi? So the first pillar is love. Kwa hivyo nguzo ya kwanza ni upendo. The second pillar is trust. 
Uh, uh, nguzo ya pili ni kuaminiana. And trust is simply relying on the integrity, ability and surety of another. Kuaminiana ni ile tu kutegemea ile hadhi na uhakikisho wa mwingine. We as pastors and leaders. Sisi ni wachungaji na viongozi. Apart from having a very strong pillar of love among us. Bali na kuwa na ile nguzo a a a enye nguvu ya upendo we must develop trust among us lazima tujenge uaminifu kati yetu we must develop a spirit where your spouse will trust you wherever you are lazima tujenge roho ambayo mchumba wako atakuamini mahali popote ulipo not every time you are somebody talks about my micro what managing no sio kila wakati mtu anaongea juu ile ya kutaka kujua nini kinatendeka when your husband arrives at home the first thing you take is the phone wakati mume wako anapofika nyumbani jambo la kwanza unafanya ni kuchukua simu you want to check who was there who was talking to him unaanza kutazama nani alikuepo na nani aliongea naye in my house katika nyumba yangu my phone is always there simu yangu iko pale kila wakati i i will never go take my wife's phone and begin checking who, who who are our friends or whom is she's talking sitawahi kuchukua simu ya mke wangu nitazama rafiki wake nani ama ameongea na kina nani and neither will she do that to me na wala hata tenda hivyo kwangu we have developed trust in such a manner that we believe each other we know we trust one another and we have no issues with one another tumejenga uaminifu kiasi ya kwamba hatuna shida na yoyote tumeaminiana na ijalishi tunafanya nini when i'm in mombasa she's not having sleepless nights nikiwa mombasa hakosi usingizi She is a professional my wife is a professional. Yeye ni mtu ambaye ameitimu. My wife works in a very high position. Mke wangu anafanya kazi katika nafasi kubwa sana. And I can tell you. Na naweza ambia. Because she is retiring. Hivi karibuni anasafi. She is a director in Kenya Bureau of Standards. Yeye ni mwelekezi katika shirika la KBS. And and specifically human resource and administration director. Na haswa katika kusimamia wafanyikazi. And she is everywhere. Na yuko kila mahali. Now when she goes away do you think I'm going to have sleepless nights Pastor Greg? I'm Sasa gonna... napo safiri unafikiria nitakaa nikoso usingizi? No 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 no. La, no, no. La, 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 la. And she knows I am pastor. She na, knows I'm bishop. Na anajua mimi ni mchungaji mimi ni askofu. Taking care of hundreds and hundreds of people. Nikichunga mamia na maelfu ya watu. I'm out on church planting. Niko nje nikijenga panda makanisa. We must develop trust in one another. Lazima tujenge uaminifu kati yetu. The point whereby we release each other in our ministries. Katika kiwango ya kwamba tunaachana ama tunaachiliana katika huduma. Number three, ya tatu. The third pillar is the pillar of respect. Msingi wa tatu ni msingi wa kuheshimiana. In other words to hold each other with high esteem and honor. Ya kwamba kushikamana na kila mmoja katika heshima ya juu na hadhi. And this is the way we behave and uh, respond to one another. Na hivi ndivyo tunavyojiongoza na kuitikiana kwa kila mmoja wetu. I can say if something is highly valued, naweza sema kama kuna kitu ambacho kinathaminiwa zaidi, that thing you will treat it with honor and respect. Hilo jambo utalichukulia na heshima na hadhi. So the question is how much do you do you respect your wife or your husband? Kwa hivyo swali ni unaheshimu mke wako ama mume wako because katika is, kiwango gani? Because that is where the base of everything is. I know we know respect respect comes in different forms. Najua tunajua heshima inakuja kwa njia tofauti. Men have their own way of uh, of understanding respect. Waume wana njia yao ya kuelewa heshima. And women have their own way of understanding Na respect. Na wake wana njia yao pia ya kuelewa heshima. So we must come to the point where we understand what is it that I must do to my spouse for me to show or for me to demonstrate my respect towards that particular Wevo, person. Lazima tufike katika kiwango kutambua na kufahamu ni kitu gani naweza kutenda ili ya kwamba mchumba wangu nimuonyeshe kwamba namheshimu I can tell you naweza kuambia this is one of the most hardest values hii ni mmoja wapo ya hadhi ambazo ni gumu kuzishikilia and we need god to help us na tunahitaji mungu kutusaidia another one is understanding let me move fast here jambo lingine ni ufahamu the fourth pillar is understanding singo ana ni ufahamu understanding is simply perceiving the meaning of ufahamu ni kuelewa maana ya When you understand your your spouse. Wakati unapoelewa mke wako. And I believe as you keep growing in marriage these things becomes clearer and clearer. Na naamini mnapokuwa katika ndoa mambo haya yanaanza kuwa wazi na kuwa wazi. Understanding kuelewa is simply perceiving the meaning of ni kujua maana ya. We speak words 
Tunaongea maneno. We make comments. Tunatoa uh, mambo. Or we say things. Tunasema mambo. How does your spouse understand what you are saying? Je, mchumba wako anaelewa vipi yale unayosema? Because when we do counseling, maana tunapofanya ushauri, one of the, the, the things that we find that is very difficult amongst amongst married people is communication. Jambo moja tunalopata kati ya watu walioana ni kuwasiliana. We as pastors how do we communicate with our spouse? Sisi kama wachungaji tunawasiliana vipi na wake zetu? You know you reach a point where you should be able to look, look at your wife's eyes and she will tell you what she needs to tell you without even speaking. If I'm preaching Kama na ubiri, and I make a statement na nafanya, na, nena jambo, which I know my wife is not happy with ambalo na jua mke wangu I, will, I will just look in her eyes I yake, will know when I get home na ntajua, I will be taught something. We must come to the place where we know how to talk to one another. Lazima tufike kiwango cha kujua jinsi tunavyoongea si kwa sisi. There is some understanding which the, 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 the natural ears don't need to hear. Kuna ufahamu mwingine ambapo masikio ya kawaida hayafai kusikia. There's one man who wrote, who, who wrote a note to his wife. Kuna mtu mmoja ambaye aliandika nakala kwa mke, mke wake. And he told his wife. Na kumwambia mke wake. I think they had had a misunderstanding. Nafikiri walikuwa hawaelewani. There was something that happened and they didn't understand one another. Kulikuwa na jambo lolotendeka na wakawa elewani. So he told her. Akamwambia. He said dearest. Akamwambia dearest. Mpenzi. If, mm. He said if I say something that can be taken into two ways kama nitasema jambo nalichukuliwe kwa njia mbili and one of those ways makes you sad bas mmoja wapo hizo njia na kufanya kuwa na uzuni and angry na hasira please not tafadhali i meant the other way nilimaanisha lile jambo lingine <laughs> because they will always be reading between the lines isn't it maana atakuwa anasoma tu katikati ya maelezo now we need to come to the place lazima tufike mahali where we must understand how well do i know my spouse mahali ambapo ni vipi ninavomuelewa vizuri mke wangu am i aware of of what he or she likes je naelewa kile ambacho anapenda do i know what makes her, him or her happy je najua kile kinachomfanya yeye kufurahi or sad ama kuwa na uzuri or frustrated ama kugandamika or angry ama hasira am i aware of how she reacts in certain in certain instances je nafahamu jinsi anavyoitikia kwa matukio fulani how does she think or how do we communicate je huwa anawaza vipi na tunawasiliana vipi how does she feel in certain ways je anahisi vipi katika mambo kadhaa you know me i am this man who just opens my house mimi ni yule mtu ambaye anafungua nyumba yangu and when our church started na wakati kanisa letu lilipoanza everybody was coming to my house Every... kila mmoja alikuwa anaingia kwa nyumba yangu some come and sleep there wengine wanakuja tu wanalala and the time came when my wife told me listen this is our house wakati ulifika mke wangu akaniambia tazama hii ni nyumba yetu i don't want anybody in this sitting sitaki mtu katika hii chumba cha makazi because we had turned our chairs into sleeping into a sleeping hostel maana tulikuwa tumegeuza viti vyetu kuwa mahali pa kulala so whenever somebody would come i would just look into her eyes and i would know what i'm being told kwa hivyo mtu anapoingia katika nilikuwa natazama macho yake na najua kile naambiwa as we are making tea i'm also making arrangements on how where this person will go and sleep tunapoandaa chai na mimi nafanya maandalizi ma huyu mtu ataenda kulala wapi can i stop there Ah, Now the fifth one and Sasa, the last one. Ya tano na ya mwisho. Is that we must have faith. Ya kwamba lazima tuwe na imani. Faith, can somebody say faith? Mtu aseme imani. Because faith is the confidence or the trust in a person or a thing. Maana imani ni ile eh, 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 ni, con ni, confidence ni kuwa na ujasiri and trust na tumaini in a person or a thing. Kwa mtu ama kitu. Now faith is the understanding that there is something greater than the issues that are affecting us in our marriage. Kwa hivyo imani ni kuwa na ufahamu ya kwamba kuna jambo kuu kuliko yale mambo ambayo yametupata katika ndoa yetu. Faith is the possibility of something better. Imani ni uwezekano wa jambo jema zaidi. Faith gives us hope. Imani inatupatia tumaini. I kept telling my wife at, at some point. Huwa naambia mke wangu wakati fulani. I used to tell her many times. Nilikuwa nikimwambia wakati mwingi. I had a phrase I used to say it will not always be so. Nilikuwa namwambia kawaida haitakuwa hivyo kawaida because when you are going through a situation maana mnapopitia hali maybe financial pengine kifedha maybe children pengine watoto maybe church pengine kanisa at that moment you feel like things are just running haywire wakati huo unadhania kwamba mambo yanaenda mrama but if you keep together with those five pillars i've mentioned lakini kama mtasimama pamoja na hizo nguzo tano nimetaja i can tell you it will never always be so naweza kuambia haitakuwa hivyo faith keeps us moving 
Imani inatufanya tusonge mbele. Because we know a day will come. Maana tunajua siku inakuja. When all these issues that we are dealing with. Wakati haya mambo yote tunahusika nayo. Will be behind us. Yatakuwa nyuma yetu. And we shall even wish that we had we, can, we will even wish that we we knew when it was happening. Na hata tutatamani tujue kwamba wakati ile ilikuwa inatendeka. Right now as I speak. Hasa hivi naponeni. Those days we had all our children they were growing up. Nyakati hizo tulikuwa na watoto wetu wote wakikua. I began church when my my, my first born child was 2 years old. Nil, nilianza kanisa wakati mtoto wangu wa kwanza akiwa na miaka miwili. I speak she's married. Napongea ameo. She has a baby. Ana mtoto. In fact this Sunday we are dedicating the child. Hasa Jumapili tunaika wakfu mtoto. My second born is working. Mtoto wangu wa pili anafanya kazi. She's in Britain studying. Yuko huko Uingereza anasoma. My third born is a medical student. Watatu ni mkufunzi wa wa wa, wa udaktari. Now we have nobody in the house. Sasa tuna mtu katika nyumba. Three bedroom house. Ah uh, uh, nyumba vimba vitatu vya kulala. Four, four bedroom house. Nyumba vimba vine vya kulala. And there is nobody. Na hakuna mtu. You can now go to any bedroom now. Unaweza ingia katika chumba chote cha kulala. And sleep sleep the way you want. Na ulale jinsi unavyotaka. It will never always be so. Haitakuwa hivyo kila wakati. That's the faith that we can carry with us even as we go. Hiyo ndio imani tunaweza beba tunapoenda. The challenges we are facing are temporal. Changamoto tunazokutana nazo ni zamda. It is just for a season. Ni kwa majira tu. When we have we have done it and Wa, we have managed them. Wakati tumemalizana nazo na tumesimamia. A moment comes. Wakati Unafika, when you can look back wakati napotazama nyuma you will say lord thank you na unasema bwana asante despite the challenges that we've gone through changamoto ambazo nimekumbana nazo can someone say amen amen now I'm, ca- I'm coming now for the next 10 minutes on what we must do to maintain a healthy pastoral life Afia. a research was done a uh, uchunguzi ulifanywa over 720 pastors kwa wachungaji miasa, zaidi ya 720 that were asked questions ambao walilizwa maswali and their wives na wake zao and probably even the spouses the men who are there na aswa uh, uh, wachumba wale uko hapo this is what this is how they answered on that research hii ndio vile walijibu katika hiyo uchunguzi that 8% Asilimia 38 they said this walisema hivi they do not get the attention they need from their spouses because of the church ne- the church needs them so much hawapati ule umakini kutoka kwa chumba wao a uh, a uh, kuliko ile kanisa inahitaji 44% said asilimia 40 walisema they believe the church expects the needs of their family to be secondary to their to, the, to, to their needs or the church's needs waliamini mahitaji ya kanisa ni muhimu kuliko mahitaji yao ya kijamii 35% said asilimia 35 wakasema they said often they resent the demands of ministry on their family they yep. resent the demands of ministry on their family ya kwamba uh, kila wakati wanaingilia ma, matamanio ya huduma kuliko yao 79 said Sabina tisa asilimia the congregation expects their families to be a role model ya kwamba kusanyiko wanatamani ya kwamba jamii zao ziwe mfano 33% said asilimia 33 wakasema they are caught up in a tug of war between church and home wamepatikana katika vita kati ya kanisa na jamii 32% said asilimia 32 wakasema that they do not have privacy in their homes ya kwamba hawana ile siri katika uh, nyumba zao and 55% agreed na asilimia 55 wakakubali it is difficult to balance church and family ya kwamba ni ngumu kuendesha kanisa na jamii and their children and, and, and a survey done by the children of pastors na ilipofanywa kwa watoto wachungaji about 60% said Asilimia 60 walisema they don't want to be pastors when they grow up. Hawataki kuwa wachungaji wanapokuwa. Na I want you to imagine your son or your daughter saying I don't want that thing. Nataka utazame ama ufikirie binti yako ama kijana wako anasema sitaki hilo jambo. And the reason is simple. Na sababu ni rahisi. Nobody cares about us. Hakuna yote anayetujali. Now you can write this down as I finish. Sasa unaweza andika chini. This calls for us to find a healthy way of maintaining our family so that we can do what paul says manage our families as we manage the church hi inahitaji sisi kutafuta njia mwafaka ya kuweza kusimamia jamii zetu kama vile paulo anavyotuambia tuweze kusimamia jamii zetu vizuri and i give i want to suggest the following thoughts na nataka kutoa vitu hivi number 1 ya kwanza lay boundaries weka mipaka 
Lay boundaries. Weka mipaka. Learn to set boundaries between family, jifunze kuweka mipaka kati ya jamii and career. Na kazi. A family home should remain family and not an extension of the church. Nyumba ya jamii ibaki kuwa nyumba ya familia na isiwe ambayo inaleta kanisa pia ndani yake. Don't misunderstand me. Usinielewe kimakosa. I'm not telling you not to have a family altar. Sisemi usiwe na dhabahu la familia. Uh, I'm not talking Haba. about that. Siongee juu hiyo. But don't take church business. Lakini usichukue kazi za kanisa. And extend it into the family. Na uingize kwa jamii. Let there be family, let there be church. Wacha kuwe na jamii, wacha kuwe na kanisa. Am I communicating with somebody here? Je, na, nawasiliana na mtu hapa. Now, number 2. Ya pili. Keep universal family standards. Weka uh, uh, viwango vya jamii yako kuwa sawa. What, what, what do I mean the word universal here? Namaanisha nini na jambo hilo? I began by saying uh, uh, marriage is the same. Nilianza na kusema kwamba ndoa ni sawa. The family of the pastor, Jamii ya is subjected the same problems that any other family out there is going to. Inapitia shida zile zile jamii nyingine pale zinapitia. Whatever they are going to is the same thing that we are going to. Chocho tunachopitia ndio kile tunapitia. Don't allow anybody to lay standards for you. Usiruhusu wote kuweka viwango kwako or for your children ama kwa watoto wako that will frustrate your family ambayo itagandamiza jamii yako. Yeah. I have set my children free. Nimeweka watoto wangu huru but I'm managing them. Lakini nawasimamia. I am teaching them. Nawafundisha. I am helping them. Nawasaidia. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Je, unapata kile naongea? Don't lock your children in the house. Usiwafungie watoto wako nyumbani. When others are playing you are locked in. Wakati wengine wanacheza wako mwafungia. But teach them. Lakini wafundishe. This is why they will say I don't want to become a pastor. Hii ndio sababu watasema sitaki kuwa mchungaji. Because believe me at a certain age they will leave you. Maana amini kwa umri fulani watakuacha. And particularly in the era that we are living in today. Na so katika enzi tunayoishi leo. Where we are over protective over our children. Mahali ambapo tunachunga sana watoto wetu. When I went to class 3, wakati nilipoenda darasa la 3 in Nairobi from Oshago in Nairobi. Kule Nairobi kutoka Oshago. My father took me to the school. Baba yangu alipeleka shuleni. When I was being admitted. Wakati ambapo nilikuwa naingizwa. He never came back to my school again. Hakuregea tena shuleni kwangu. But today you will find even university students. Lakini leo utapata hata watoto wa chuo kikuu. Their parents are still going to visit them. Wasasio bado wanaenda kuwatembelea. Am I saying the truth? Ah, je, naongea ukweli? Number 3. Ya tatu. A few more minutes. Number 3. Ya tatu. Deal with codependencies. Ah 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 shughulikia wale ambao wanatutegemea yes wale wanatutegemea amen because the pastor has a lot of people who want to depend on you maana wachungaji una watu wengi ambao wanataka kutegemea wewe you will find a pastor extending a hand to a parishioner or to a member of the church when there is need in the house utapata mchungaji ananyosha mkono wa msaada kwa mshirika ama kwa mtu wakati kuna hitaji ndani ya nyumba yake am i saying the truth Ah, je, naongea ukweli? And your wife has no has no food but you are buying food for a member of the church who came for counseling in your office. Mke wako hana chakula lakini unanunulia chakula mtu ambaye alikuja kwa ushauri katika ofisi yako. A pastor mchungaji has so many dependents. Ana watu wengi wanaomtegemea. You will find a brother from Mombasa coming to your home in Nairobi just unexpectedly he has arrived. Utapata ndugu yako kutoka Mombasa amekuja Nairobi bila kutarajia I'm talking about a brother not your brother a brother Naongea juu ya ndugu katika Kristo hey, another pastor has just arrived Chungaji mwingine tu amefika And then you push your, chi- your kids in a corner and you give him your children's bedroom like I've done many times Alafu unasukuma watoto wako kwa kona na unapeana kile chumba chao cha kulala mgeni I have learned to deal with those dependencies now Nimejifunza kushughulikia watu hao wanaonitegemea sasa. This way when Greg Johnson comes he'll not sleep in my house. Hii ndio sababu Greg Johnson apokuja halali nyumbani kwangu. He must go to a hotel. Lazima aende kwa hoteli. My house is for my my wife and my children. Nyumba yangu ni kwa mke wangu na watoto wangu. 
In fact, even as they were leaving, and this I'm telling the truth. My wife told me this bedroom belongs to my son. No other fellow should sleep inside here. When we left Bungoma, I found her own sister's brother had arrived. His sister and her son had arrived. The son of the sister, we had to put him in the guest room. My son's room is my son's room. Those are the boundaries we have made. Because my son will arrive anytime from the university. He'll find somebody sleeping in his room. Where does he go and sleep? Let me move to the next one. Acknowledge, acknowledge spouse's role. Spouses, whether, the, whether you are a, a, a pastor, a, a lady pastor, or a, a, a man pastor. Sometimes they feel very lonely and out of ministry. And many times they don't feel like they are part of church. They are not part of church at all. There, were, there was a moment when even my wife felt like she was not doing, really, she was not participating. Yeah, she and me, me and my board members, me and my elders. And I had to create room for her. And I, I had to look for that which I believe she can do best. I realized women ministry. Because she is my wife, she's the first lady. And, and, and as Bishop Pastor was telling us, let older women cancel younger women. So I released her in that ministry. And I decided I will support it fully. Even with resources. As we are talking, they've just finished a women's conference. With, Lord, with hundreds of women there, Pastor Greg, you saw. Because, because, because I don't want her to feel like she's not part of this thing. You know, in our churches, we, we even create a place where they just go and sit. They just sit there and wait until the wanaka time Acknowledge your, your, your spouse's role. Even at home, she will, she will be a blessing to your family. Two more minutes. Number, number, is it number four number five? Number four. Acknowledge conflicts. I mean manage conflicts. Simamia. Ile, e, e, Dis, uh, discovering how conflicts can provoke communication ya ugomfi, release emotions isia, identify and clarify problems tambua, na wazi, izo shida. and permit do, do not permit individual, individual, individualization. What I have, what we have done over the years, we have never allowed our differences into the church. No, 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 no. Even if you have a problem, deal with it. But most important, when you have somebody whom you are accountable to, or someone who is accountable whom, whom your family is accountable to. Ama mtu yako and you have issues. Na una mambo. The best you can do in confidence, talk with that person. Jambo kwa ujasiri. Nena na mtu. And he must be a senior person who can hold you in confidence. Na lazima awe ni mtu, uh, um, kisiri. Do not be that person who is sharing family problems with your, with your, with your members, parishioners. Usiwe mtu wewe unashiriki shida zako za jamii. Na watu, and, that's the, and that's the reason why limit those who live in your house. Na indio sababu uwe na viwango, vya wale watu naishi katika nyumbayo. Because any small misunderstanding. Maana kila kutoelewana kidogo. Don't imagine it ends in your family. Ha? Huh? It doesn't end in your family. Haishi katika family. It is always taken out. Inatolewa inje. You will hear people discussing even matters which don't concern them in the family of the, fa the pastor. Utasikia watu wanaongea jia mambo ambaye haya wausu. Hata katika nyumba mchungaji. They even know when you quarreled. Hata wanajua wakati mlipigana. They even know when you spoke something. Wanajua hata wakati liponena jambo. Now, as a pastor. Sasa, kama mchungaji. Manage that. Sima, uh, 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 simamia ilo jambo. Manage that. 
Another one, probably the second last thing I'm done. Maintain personal and family time. Hifadhi ule wakati wako binafsi na wajami. Learn to say no. Jifunze kusema la. Because pressure will be there on you from your parishioners. Maana misukumo itakuwepo kwa walo na kutegemea. They will come to you and they'll demand your time. Watakuja kwako na wanaitaji wakati. So maintain your own family time. Kwa hivyo hifadhi wakati wako na jamii. It's not to everybody. It's not, you're not meant to minister to everybody. We ukwe kwa kudumia kila mtu. There are moments... When, when you need your own time you and your family and your wife wakati unahitaji wakati wako wewe peke yako mke wako na jamii yako you know some of us believe pastors never go on leave unajua wengine wetu wanaamini mchungaji aende leave that is wrong hiyo ni makosa create leave for yourself jie andalie leave wewe mwenyewe we've been told here we must prepare for retirement tumeambiwa hapa lazima tujiandae kwa kustaafu we must prepare for retirement lazima ujiandae kustaafu i am preparing for retirement myself mimi najiandaa kustaafu mwenyewe and i have decided once every one one week per, per month na nimejianda kila juma moja kwa mwezi Four or five days in a month siku 4 tano kwa mwezi i will go away nitatoka niende kando my home nyumbani kwangu I build my home. I'll go to my home. Nimejenga kwangu nina nyumba yangu. I don't want anybody there. Sitaki mtu huko. I want to be there alone. Nataka niwe peke yangu. I read my Bible. Nisome Biblia yangu. I pray for my church. Niombe kanisa langu. I pray for my leaders. Niombe viongozi wangu. I energize myself. Nijitie nguvu. And by Friday I'm back here. Jumaa nimerudi kwa jina la Yesu. I need my personal time. Nahitaji wakati wangu mimi mwenyewe. I also need time with my family. Pia nahitaji wakati na jamii yangu. And then finally na hatimaye the last one in our manuals ya mwisho katika kusimamizi wetu develop a, 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 jenga a church pastoral care policy ile e, 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 jenga ile a personal a, 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 a church pastoral care policy ile e, e, policy ya kuchunga kanisa a a mchungaji Yes, you must have a policy on how to take care of your pastor. Lazima uwe na sera ya jinsi ya kumia mchungaji. Because nobody will care for you. Maana kuna mtu atakakukulinda. I liked what Pastor Greg used to say. Napenda kile mchungaji Greg alikuwa anasema. He will say when you drop on this pulpit and you are dead. Anasema unapoanguka katika ile dhabahu unaufa. The next day, siku inayofuata, you, you will be called the former pastor. Utaitwa mchungaji aliyekuwa. In fact the church will embrace the new pastor very fast. Hata kanisa litakumbatia mchungaji mwingine kwa haraka sana. If you are living in a, in a house that was given to you by the church. Kama unaishi katika nyumba ambayo ulipewa na mchungaji. The, the next pastor will want it. Mchungaji yule mwingine ataitaka. Are you getting what I'm saying? Je, unasikia kile ninasema? So come up with a policy. Kwa hivyo njo na sera. Most most likely find some men in the church. Tafuta haswa kama watu katika kanisa. Who will have what you call us who will who will develop a pastoral care policy? ambao watainua ama watajenga sera ya kumlinda mchungaji when you have no food you shouldn't stand and tell the people have no food wakati hauna chakula usisimame na kuambia watu sina chakula let this man know you have no food in your house wacha watu wajue una chakula nyumbani are you getting my point je unapata when, point when you have no fuel in your car wakati hauna mafuta kwa gari yako these are the people who should tell the church our pastor needs fuel in the car ndio watu waambie watu mchungaji wetu anahitaji mafuta kwa gari and especially if we go the direction that we are being taught here na tunapoelekea katika mwelekeo tunafundishwa hapa where the pastor doesn't touch money mali mchungaji agusi fedha do you think they will give to you just like that je unafikiri watakupatia tu hivyo there must be some people there must be some way there must be a policy lazima kuwe na watu lazima kuwe na njia lazima kuwe na sera inflation is there Aa, ule kupanda maisha ipo what, what should the church do concerning you kanisa lifanye nini kuhusiana na wewe Retirement, retirement, retirement plan for you. Wawe na ile mpango wa wewe kustaf. Insurance for you. Wawe na bima kwa ajili yako. Are you getting what I'm saying? Je, unasikia kile ninasema? I'm saying this will help us to have a, a very healthy family. Nasema hii itatusaidia kuwa na jamii iliyo na afya. And also to balance what we are doing with what we are doing in the church. Na pia kuwa na kiasi kwa kile tunachofanya kanisani na kile tunafanya kwa jamii zetu na naweza kuambia you will be able to prosper utaweza kufanikiwa your ministry will prosper huduma itafanikiwa and you will be a happy pastor na utakuwa mchungaji mwenye furaha you will finish your course with, with, with joy utamaliza safari yako na furaha and you will not be afraid from leaving the pulpit na hautaogopa kuacha dhabahu instead of holding on the pulpit kwa nani kushikilia dhabahu may the lord bless you bwana wabariki i don't know how much you've received from what i've si. said juu mmepokea mangapi kutoka kwa wale nimenena 
God bless you. Bwana wabariki. And may God give us healthy Na. pastoral families. Bwana atupatie jamii za wachungaji zilizo na afya. Thank you Pastor Greg. Asante mchungaji Greg. I think I've taken my one hour and I've done. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Amen.